All right, so I just finished the PlayStation 5 live stream. I was loving my channel. If you guys didn't know, I sometimes go live doing, you know, just talking about stuff, debating things, playing games, stuff like that. And um, I, I really wanted to kind of formulate my thoughts in a quick video before I kind of break it apart into like a, a much longer, like six month or two a year, like set of videos or like a series of me talking about the PlayStation 5. I kind of just wanted this video to be a brief summary of my opinions after watching that about an hour and a half long so for those of you who don't know i have never owned a playstation console before i've always owned an xbox and i've always preferred xbox over any other console just because i've i grew up with xbox and i still do feel like microsoft is offering a lot with the series x this time with the xbox one it was a lot harder to justify but with the Series X, I feel like they have a much better shot of winning people over. However, Sony is not giving up, and that's they definitely ironed that out or reaffirmed that, I guess, uh, with this presentation today. They revealed a lot of stuff about the hardware, the games, things like that. And I want to kind of break apart the stuff that kind of stands out to me, and I want to start off with the games first. First one is Project Athea by Square Enix. And I'm not sure, I didn't write down which ones are exclusives or not, but I really liked this one, even though we didn't see too much, just because it seemed like a pretty good tech demo to show off what the PS5 could do. And it looked absolutely, absolutely beautiful. So I wrote that down, I'll kind of, I'll take a look at it later, see if it has a good story, things like that. But as of right now, I think it just looks really good. The second one was Stray, which is, seems like a kind of interesting, like, game where, kind of like Soba, like, you know, like a big robot universe after all humans have died. And your cat, I think, or like your stray cat. There, we didn't really see much, but again, looks really cool, looks interesting, and looks very beautiful. Graphics are great, and of course, because the PS5 takes advantage of ray tracing, we're gonna see a lot of really good graphics on here. Uh, third game was Destruction All Stars. That's a, this very different game. Um, I really liked it because I thought it would look fun to play with friends, so I wrote it down. I wouldn't say it's like a, it's probably like my le the least interesting game on here to me, but I think it, it is fun at least. From what i can see i could see me and some friends playing that and you know just having a good time but not really playing it by myself too much the big one though was kenya bridge of spirits i really liked what that had to show off it was kind of like a pikmin sort of game but i like the art style i love what the story has to offer so far and it looks really interesting so i'm definitely gonna be taking a look at that and then of course probably the most exciting thing on here which is not a ps5 exclusive uh, Ghostwire Tokyo seems very, very cool. I think we saw it last year for the first time in 2019 at Bethesda Z3. And even though the director of, I believe it was the director of art, who, I'm not exactly sure what her role was, but after she left, I'm still excited for this game. It looks a, like a lot of fun. It's probably the most exciting thing that they showed off at the PS5 event, even if it, again, is not a PS5 exclusive. It might be, though. I, we're going to have to take a look more into it. I don't think it is, though, and I would like to play it on my computer, so. Okay, so a quick update about uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. Um, so it is a timed exclusive for the PS5. Uh, they didn't say how long, but 2021 is its release date, and it is going to be coming to the PC, but they didn't say anything about Xbox, so I would not be... I'm not too sure whether it's coming to Xbox. It's still up in the air. Obviously, it's not coming to Switch. I'm going to end that right there. But yeah, um, timed exclusives, I, not, I don't like them, but I guess I just got to deal with it. But yeah, I'll be paying attention to that. Um, speaking of Bethesda, they also showed off Deathloop, which kind of seemed like a Katana Zero first-person shooter. And it was made by kind of like an Asian team. So that's going to be kind of interesting. I love Katana Zero, so we're going to be taking a look at that. Uh, Solar Ash kind of looked like, um, I forget what it's called. It's like... Um, uh, it, it looks like um, a very popular PS3 game, I believe it was. It was like a, you know, a like game where you're in the desert, sort of. Uh, Journey is what it was called, and I loved, I loved Journey and how it looks. So, definitely going to be uh, looking forward to uh, this game, Solar Ash. I, I, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely going to give it a shot. Uh, Resident Evil Village, or Resident Evil 8, as I'm just going to call it. Uh, also looks very cool. Never played a Resident Evil game, but mostly just because I'm not really too into that. But this... Oh my god, someone mowing their lawn or something? It, it, it stands out to me. And again, a lot of these games stand out just because they're graphics alone. But this one seems to have a pretty good story going for it. And I've heard a lot of positive things from friends and people I know about the Resident Evil series. So maybe I'll give it a shot. And the final game I wrote down was Horizon Forbidden West. Now, of course, obviously, Horizon Zero Dawn, sequel to that. 
I never really knew what the story was behind Horizon Zero Dawn, but I like, now that I kind of got a basic idea after watching this trailer, uh, I, yeah, after the event, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing some more about Horizon Forbidden West. And, um, yeah, those are really just the games that stood out to me. There were other games that I feel like I should note, but I'll probably do that in a later video. Now, talking about the actual console itself. So, hardware-wise, there are a couple things that I need to mention. First off, I do agree that I think it looks good. The PlayStation 5, I don't think that it looks bad, and I don't think it looks... It's a very... As, as a YouTuber I watch, Review Tech USA, as he put it, Sony and Microsoft went in completely different directions with their designs, but they both look good. And I, I believe that. Between the two, I'd say I, I don't know, I'd say I probably like the Xbox's design a little more, just because it's a more, like, minimalistic and not as in your face. But I'm sure I'll get used to a PS5 design, and maybe I'll prefer that. And especially because I like, you know, more, like, minimalist. I, th I think, like, that might look really clean. So, we'll have to see. The controller already, we already know a lot about the controller. It looks cool. They're making, like, a game based on, like, the controller looks like. The all-digital edition is going to absolutely fuck with, uh, with uh, game, GameStop and EB Games, because now that, you know, it depends on the price, which we'll get into in a second, but that digital edition could definitely mess with GameStop stock. I'm sure actually right now it's already dropping. It's not like it could go any worse than where it is already kind of, you know, ground zero, like the lowest point it's ever been. The big thing that I keep seeing though is why didn't Sony show the price of the PS5? And I think when you think about it, it actually makes a lot of sense as to why they're not showing the price. So, Sony's main competitor is Microsoft, and Microsoft has shown less than what PlayStation has now shown. Microsoft has not shown what their price is, and this generation is going to be a lot closer than, as I said, the Xbox One and the PS4. So, I think what the companies are trying to do, Sony and Microsoft, is they're trying to wait to see who's going to announce their price and release date first, and the other person is going to take that information and scale back on it. So, for example, say um let's take sony so let's say microsoft tomorrow reveals the price of the xbox series x so let's say 500 dollars, and it releases let's say it releases in like i don't know like like november like late november sony's gonna take that information and even though they already have a, an advantage like popularity wise they're going to make the ps4 the ps5 i mean the ps5's price they're going to undercut it in comparison to the Xbox Series X. And so then they'll make it maybe $450 or maybe $400, depending on the model you get. And then they're going to take the release date and they're also going to wind that back too. say maybe November, like early November, late, Mar late October. And Microsoft also wants to do this. So both companies are waiting for the other one to reveal first so that they can play their cards in response. And I feel like as a result of this, we're going to be waiting throughout the summer to hear the price and I feel like it's not going to be anytime soon they're going to hear it. Sony's probably going to end up going first uh, just because they usually have, they, I think they have more pressure from the community to reveal the price but we'll have to see. And again they also have an all digital version so we'll have to, we'll have to see what both companies offer but I'm not actually surprised, I was actually expecting them to not reveal the price or the release date so we're probably going to get a separate event for all that maybe in like maybe in September or July or August, probably sometime around then. But uh, yeah, that's basically my thoughts on the PS5 recap into a short little video. I hope you enjoyed and make sure to subscribe if you feel that you are the most um, amazing person on the planet. You feel like helping, uh, helping someone like me out. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be making more content on these consoles as they start to come out and more information comes out. And as always, see ya.